Well, howdy, neighbor. Welcome back to Hammer and Saw Customs. I'm old brother Bill, jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by here at our little outback backwoods off grid uh, quarter processing station. That's right. This little gym right here is the end cabinet uh, that we're going to build on the other end. But I wanted to show you what we're going to be building, so you'll see what we'll be building. Yeah, be building. <laughs> so, we got this end cabinet attached to the other part of the cabinet that we've been working on. So, we've just got a little latch here. We've got our hinges here. It's the same kind of hinges we installed for the small cabinet door. And, here's the inside. The inside's not finished, because we'll probably be putting long items in here to store, keep, uh, you know, for whatever project. But before we get into that, guys, grab you a seat, grab you a snack, something cold to drink, and we'll be right back after the intro, and we'll show you how I started the frame on this little gym. So come right on back. So, what we're going to be doing today, just like I showed you on that end of the uh, pallet wood quarter processing station, we're going to set up the same cabinetry setup right here. So first, we're going to start out with the skeleton frame, and then we'll get to the skin, and then we'll get to the door. Or maybe that might be a couple parts in itself because uh, light's getting pretty low for today. So see what we can get into today, and then we might have to break this video up just a little bit. So, you know, keep your attention span happening here, right here, there, on this. <laughs> All right, so I do have something to share. Like I was saying, time to time, uh, some of the subscribers send some things in. They want me just to try out, maybe not on screen or get my opinion. Not real big into doing the tool review thing, but... This couldn't have come at a better time. Now, this has been sitting on the shelf for a while. Um, and I've showed you how to run screws in at a 45 when you're kind of butting uh, wood up together. But apparently, there's this little pocket hole jig tool that uh, a subscriber sent me. It's coming pretty handy. So I'm going to unbox this real quick. And we'll go over it and see how you could use one of these. I'm not going to mention a company. I'm not going to mention a subscriber because they didn't ask me to. So it's a, it's a simple little unit. You've got a, a depth. It looks like it comes with uh, a drill bit that's got offset for the screws. It comes with the instructions. And, you know, if this had been mine and I bought it, of course, you know, instructions, I'm going to, you know, just, just toss and figure it out. But since someone sent it to me, I'm going to be... Uh, you know, perspective, and I'm going to keep those, or respectful, <laughs> and I'm going to keep those. There's some other uh, parts and pieces that come with this, like some uh, templates, maybe even, uh, it even comes with a little driver piece, because it comes with some uh, square head screws and wood plugs, and I'm sure they want you to you know, buy all that garbage goop. But what we're interested in is only a few pieces. The main body. Allen wrench to set the collar on the drill bit depth and this little cool uh, guide block. Now it has some numbers on the side, so pretty simple with that. When you slide it in here, you're going to take the measurement of the width. Well, I get you know, handy dandy tape measure. So if you pop that up there, like an inch and uh, three eighths, boom. So it's got the markings, so what you do is you drop it to the line right there, and it's got this little screw. It's got all these little holes, and that locks it into the depth. Now, as you put a piece of wood in here, this kind of clamps down on it and holds it in place when you go to drill. 
Now, with that said, this 90 degree uh, framing, don't over, I found out, I've already used this, of course, but um, don't over tighten that when you tension this because it could have a tendency to snap right here. So that's a, just a product thing if you ever get one of these, it's plastic. Not just this one or any of them. So you want to watch that. Then the next thing is you're going to take the depth that you want to drill this little pocket hole. It's got a collar here and it has two different sides to line this up for depth wise. For depth -wise. Actually with mine and what I'm doing, I've got it maxed out. As you can see that goes all the way down, collars all the way up here because what's that last one? A 1 and 3 8 inch. So I have 1 and 3 8 inch. There's three holes. There's one in each end and kind of one almost in the middle but offset. So most most of the time I'm going to use C and A for when I have when you have a two by four width. And then sometimes when I'm joining a, just one board smaller, I'll use that center one. So anyway, we'll get into that. Especially the center one will come in more play when we're doing some drawers. I've got some drawers that I want to build in these lower cabinets. So. With that said, without us getting too much uh, stuck in the weeds, we're going to try this little bugger out on building this frame. So let me get that set up and I'll show you how that works. So I've got this unit set up here. We've just got a C clamp. Now there's four holes that you could actually permanently mount this for with some screws. You could just set it up on your little shop bench somewhere and just you know keep it there and use it whenever and wherever. Or you can use a C-clamp like this, and this is why I kind of built this overhead uh, overhang on the workstation top, so I could clamp things to it like this as we're going along. So with that, got it clamped down. We've got our depth set to the thickness of our board. Basically, you're just going to slide this in here, center it. Use your clamp, you know, this back slider clamp right here to hold your piece in place. Now you don't want to over tighten that because like I said, you could possibly break this frame here. I'm not sure, but it gives a lot of leverage right there. So you want to adjust that screw until it just goes about just about like that. So it's in there, it's not gonna move. Now you could use if you've got a real fancy piece of wood and you don't want to get any oil stain up, that might you might not want to do this, but this does have a metal collar sleeve in there. So I'm going to put some water displacement, their 40th try, um, on here, on the on the um, drill bit, just uh, keep from everything binding, and we're going to lay into it. that neighbor is pretty much it there you got it I've already done a lot of these because on our frame that we're making on the end it's not quite tall enough I needed another nine inches to get to the height so this works out great now if you don't have one of these tools I'm not saying try to get one of these or you know I got this one for free so brother Bill's gonna use it especially subscribers sent it in I'm gonna I'm gonna do what they asked but if you didn't have a pocket, you can always do a pre-drill with the you know smaller bit. You can make a pilot hole at a 45 like that, and then you can just take your screw and enter it that you know screw it in that way. That's a pretty good uh, you know joint. But apparently these are going to go in just like so. I'm going to use a two and a half inch screw. Drop those into those little pilot hole centers. Get out our little hammer drill driver, line that everything up. Get that in there, there. Oh, and I used the wrong one. Hold on a second. So with these pilot holes, 
Another thing you're gonna run into, you're probably gonna need a driver bit that's a little bit longer than the norm. And what I found out, the depth that I'm going, when I drive into about here, that pretty much bottomed out that screw. And you can hear that, that tone, that change in the driver. So we've got everything lined up there. And look at that, pretty snazzy, eh? So, I want to say thanks to the subscriber that sent it in. They didn't say I could use their name or what. They're not a, the, hopefully it wasn't a company, because like I said, not really doing product uh, evaluation, but it's a pretty handy little item. Uh, I'm sure there's like several manufacturers of it. So, hey, maybe you want to get one, maybe you don't. Like I said, I got this one. I'm going to keep using it, and uh, we'll see how long it holds up or last. So with that, let's get on with the show and show you how I'm laying out this frame. All right, neighbor, here we go. On today's tools, of course we're going to always be using our flexible yardstick measuring tape, our triangle square, our piano. Going to be using some two and a half inch deck screws. I've already showed you how we did our pocket holes and we're going to use our handy dandy uh, 5,000 deck screw driver. Now what we've got here is uh, our frame set up. It's just two pallet board main runners with some cross pieces. I didn't really go over the size of that because your shop, your build may vary. Now with this we've already done the end piece. I showed you how those go on. So now we're going to do the cross pieces. So what I've done is uh, taking a measurement and got the center of our first pallet wood uh, runner and mark that. That's where our center support's gonna go. We're just gonna install our screws into the pilot holes and the pocket holes that have already been, uh, we've already drilled. And we're just gonna secure those together and that's gonna be one frame. And then we're going to do another frame because we're going to do one frame here and one frame on the outside and then attach that with some cross pieces and then to the deck. Pretty simple. Uh, this is all pretty much rustic simple build with the minimum amount of tools to make a functioning workstation um, that we need now, like right now. <laughs> so I'm going to get a few of these screwed in or well, let's just go with this one. We've already got our lines marked on our main supports, our cross supports are three and a half inches. So we're gonna go at one and three quarters. So that's the center of our board. We're gonna line that up on our mark. And that is just how simple this pocket hole, drill holes go and you know, they're just the handiest thing as a pocket on a shirt. All right. Pretty simple, eh? So I've got the top and I got the bottom to do. Won't bore you with that. I'll get those done. And then I'll go ahead, rinse and repeat, and build the other frame, which will be a mirror image. And then we'll get those up and set in place. So stand by. Okay, well there you go neighbor. Now you've got two frames instantly up here. <laughs> I've not done anything except stand them up in the location they're going to go. Now we've got our cross pieces like at the bottom, front, back. We'll have a cross piece here then we'll have two cross pieces at the top. Now on the ones on the bottom I'm going to go ahead and use our little um, jig to put our pocket holes so I can get a good uh, attachment to the bottom and then the ones that are going to the wall we're just going to screw in from the side and then screw into the structure uh, basically my garage so with that let's pop back over to the pocket hole jig and I'll show you how that center hole will use when you're using it along a long run like this one here so let's do that real quick I think you guys got the idea but we'll just cover that just because you know um, 
subscriber was so nice in sending that to me to use on a show, get my opinion, and uh, see how it goes. So let's head right over there. All right, so we got the unit set up here. We've already, you know, took our measurements. Everything's still within that one and three eighths. We want to adjust our clamp. So when I was talking about there's three holes and there's a center hole B, that's basically what I'm going to be using here. I'm just going to eyeball the center of this unit, put it in place, clip it down. And instead of using the end one or doing two, I'm just going to do the one. pretty self-explanatory I think you guys got it from before but now we've got our pocket hole in the center what I want to do is one on each end so when I set this and I screw it to the side I it will tie into the bottom so enough of that because it's just rinse and repeat I think you got it neighbor all right neighbor <laughs> we've got our cross pieces we've got our um, pilot holes already drilled We've got our frame set in place. We've got our pocket holes. Now it's just about bringing it all together. Uh, the sun is going down and the rain is coming in, so I'm losing light real quick. So we might be able to get this frame done today, and we'll probably have to do a follow-up video uh, to the skin and the door and all that thing. It's just I think we're going to run out of time before the light goes away. So with that, we've already done our pilot holes here. We have already brought in our handy dandy truth and lie teller. There we go. Bada boom, bada bing. We've got our Tanya Harding. We'll tap that into place. We're in there, so that's cool. So now we're just gonna start attaching our frame. Like so, I am going to have to drill some pilot holes to attach to this piece before I do our cross pieces. We're still in the bubble. So, let me get these pilot holes drilled. I'll get that screwed down. We'll throw in the cross piece. We'll put the end piece on and uh, pretty much rinse and repeat once we do one side and that. Uh, we'll go from there. So let me get these done so you're not just bored to death. But we wanted to tie this in to this support beam right here. And then we'll cross, brace it, and then we'll tie that into the house. And then tie that into our base storage area. So let me get that done because I missed that. And we'll go from there. Alright, I got a pilot hose. I'm using a three and a half inch because I want this whole beam here because our hinges are going to be on this side. So we're going to use this and we're going to use our three and a half inch screws on the inside where we've got our board lined up for cross, cross board here where I got our pilot hole. So let's set those up. Keep this as straight as possible. that all in. Now let's go to the other side. Tie this guy in. Just like so. Okay, 
So there we have it. Nice and flush. Got we got us tied up here. Now what we want to do, last but not least, we may have to adjust this just a little bit to get it flush. That's what this guy is for. And there we go. You want to swap out. Right here we go. So we're going to go back to our two and a half because we're going to use our pocket holes. We want to make sure our end is in. Ooh, see that just suck right down in there. Oh yeah, look at that. Last one. So, pretty simple. I'm gonna do the back one, I'm gonna do the cross one, and then the top one. So, probably just put that maybe on the time lapse and let you guys see that. We'll go from there. But let me get it set up so you're not just watching me screw screws all day long, and we'll have a finished product. All right, this is your captain speaking. I now requesting warp speed, engage. There you have it. About all we're gonna get done today. The weather's not cooperating. Got some clouds moving in. It's getting late in the afternoon. Lights going away. But there you go. One rustic frame that we built out of pallet wood that you can use for your uh, hoarder prep station or off-grid workstation or you know backwoods workstation out of you know parts and pieces that most people are throwing away. Well, the old used tools, used to you, new to me, throw away to the other guy, once again, held up for another exciting uh, show. I appreciate you folks for stopping by. As always, I'm going to pander to you. You guys can hit that subscribe button down there. It's a little hammer and saw emblem. Share those likes and like and share the video if you can. I greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to get the videos up a little higher. Might be some freebies coming out real soon. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. It might be a surprise. It may not be for, you know, new subscribers. It might just be old subscribers. Who knows what it might be. But anyway, stay tuned for that. As always, Brother Bill, thanks you for, for uh, being a good neighbor. Because if a neighbor can learn to do it, you can learn to do it too, neighbor. And as always, Safety Steve says, while you're out there hammering away on your fun projects, let's keep those projects fun and safe and remember to hammer on safety last but not least brother bill's always going to hit you up with let's remember our veterans past and present and our first responders that are out there whether it be police fire emergency ems whatever the case may be when you hear those sirens see those lights get out of the way until next time brother bill's going to miss you and uh we'll be back real soon We'll get this skinned in, framed in, and get a door hung on it. What do you say? Then we can move on to the other top cabinetry space. And I'll show you how to do one of those drawers made out of entirely recycled materials like most of this. So until next time, keep between the ditches. Brother Bill's going to see you real soon. Aloha.